Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'd like to welcome everybody, but the first I'd like to call is call the college to order. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. First, there will be a brief announcements period. Then we will have our speaker. After our speaker, Charlie will go first. Then it will be me. We'll then have closing statements in our debate. Then we'll have a question and answer period. And then after that, we'll get to have our infamous rebuttal period. In order to keep the uh, delays from Tonight I was a little bit delayed in getting some equipment set up, so uh, one final note. Uh, while, while they're starting to speak, I'll, I'll be coming around to correct the, connect the, collect the three dollar dues for the college. Just three dollars tuition per head per night. So uh, just be ready. Uh, get your three dollars out so we don't have to shuffle a lot. And uh, our first speaker tonight is going to be Charles Paydock, the legendary Charles Paydock. Thank you. Infamous is more appropriate. All right. Thank you very much. Timmy, are you rolling? You're rolling. You know, you can, after I'm done, if you want to back out, that's fine with me. We won't say anything. If you want to quit and declare me the winner, bad you know, chance of that happening. You know, you can. Right. Yeah, I'm right. let you know. Let me get your. We won't say right. anything. All right. Are we up and we're going to debate here? Thank you. My apologies for the technical delay, but let's get going. Um, I'm going to be quick here. Cover a lot of topics. First of all, uh, some general things about celebrating Christmas. Uh, then we'll move into a little more detail regarding uh, the, the initial points. I'll be covering about three or four very important environmental issues regarding the holiday. And I'll conclude with some of my suggestions on what you should do instead. Okay. All right. One thing about in, in, in celebrating Christmas, uh, uh, in the increase in the celebration, the magnitude of the holiday celebration, exactly parallels the onset of climate change. Now, I'll step aside a minute and I'll tell you how I got cited in this topic. Uh, there is some concern among the scientific community that we are about to have a sixth, number six, extinction. There's been five extinctions. Uh, the, as an extinction is the loss of 50% of the species, at least. That defines an extinction. There is serious concern, as I say, that the sixth extinction has established, and I'm going to show you how Christmas is probably the reason this is happening. But anyhow, the, <laughs> there's a book by that. Book, the, right? the, uh, there is a book, The, the Six Extinction by Colbert. Uh, by the way, if you go to YouTube, you can find probably two or three, two dozen lectures on the causes of mass extinction easily. Uh, videotapes of lectures and plenty of articles. Um, the third one. The Permian extinction is the one that is, was the most serious in which it, it got rid of 95% of the species of animals on the earth, including the insects, which is, that tells you that no one really knows what precipitated these. They say it was a solar sunburst, a gamma ray burst, could be volcanic activity. They also think it was perhaps movement of the continents at the time. And the last one, of course, uh, the KT extinction, the fifth one that got rid of the dinosaurs was, of course, an asteroid hit the Earth around the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so that's basically where I'm coming from. And there are serious discussions about the onset of these this, uh, extinctions. Now let's take a look at Christmas. And what are the basic ho ho attendant, uh, holidays attendant to the holiday? I mean, you got a guy who digs up stuff, it's made in the toys and gifts. Then there's a lot of energy used at each step of the process. Vehicles delivering it, 
then you guys show up at Kmart or who knows where, Target, Target, then you end up giving it, you know, it's a gift to you, my sweetheart, you know, and then you end up pitching it. Anyhow, we can see that there's a lot of energy used in the entire process. Uh, regarding oil, most, you'll see that most of the gift giving that goes on is petroleum based. As well, as a ton to travel to the holiday, which I gave you some facts and figures on here. But in toy business alone, uh, is a heavy user of petroleum products in this regard. Uh, on the holidays, being a transportation guy, I can assure you, there's maximum use of fossil fuels during this holiday, regardless of the transportation mode, except perhaps high-speed railroads. Railroads your best bet if you're going to travel anywhere. I take right, Mike. Yeah, take the train. All right, save the earth. Anyhow, I'll give you some facts and figures on this. Yeah, traffic jam people. By the way, I just want a little side here. Considering Thursday was Thanksgiving, I had posted this on our transit site, but uh, 50, over 50 million people traveled 50 miles or more away from home this Thanksgiving. Is, we're still in the holiday, of course. Uh, tra travel times were four times as long. You people don't want public transit, well then sit in your car. I heard the young lady come in and tell them, oh, I, 90, I don't know what 90 is exactly. That says I don't drive, but I think it's a highway. Well, <laughs> he was stuck in traffic, which is not surprising. But um, the highest volume of uh, volume in many, many years, since 2005. And uh, by the way, for, your, for the opportunity to sit in traffic, in your car, you're paying the highest gas prices in three years. Yeah. Anyhow, one thing about Christmas is that it, one of the things in order to celebrate it, that's presently constituted, is the petroleum infrastructure that's required. We don't think about that as part of the energy usage, but the pipelines, uh, the crude oil tank cars, uh, and what have you, that burn up your town. Okay, another thing attended to the holiday, and I believe you, everyone knows this, there is total disregard of any energy conservation practices whatsoever. I mean, this, this place is visible from space. Uh, but there are some things you can do in this regard. Uh, I have very modest decorations in my place on the south side. And I still won first prize with the non-illuminated decorations of my house last year. So there. Uh, first place. Oh, I got to put up all these lights, yada, 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 yada. <laughs> hey, all right. Siri getting serious again but a comprehensive new UN study predicts that global warming with catastrophic drought, flooding, and heat waves is expected even faster than previously predicted, as soon as 2040. So it's on its way, unless you keep celebrating Christmas, though, like nothing's gonna happen, right? Don't let, you gotta listen to me. But, all right. Seriously though, how much really our natural resources do we have left and do we want to use it celebrating Christmas? But coal, we've got about 150 years worth of coal reserves left. That's that's quite that's the largest. Oil, 50 years at best. Uh, the oil is used not only to power vehicles but it's used to make different plastics and synthetic materials. I still remember the speaker here, that gave the, the guy was a PhD, the, the chemist, and he said given the properties of oil, printing it, he said it's just unbelievable, given the things that you can do with it. And we just burn it up, you know. And natural gas, we've got the same thing, about 50 years worth uh, left. Is, uh, but there's increased demand for natural gas so we don't know how long that'll be around. But here's the only page I got with a lot of writing on it, 
But the real source of our planetary, what is the real source of our planetary self-destruction? It's growth-dependent capitalism. The root cause of climate change is the economic system, namely one that prioritizes profit and continuous increases in production and consumption. There you go, that's the nut. I don't, you can look up all the causes of extinction, but there it is, and the source is the United Nations. If anybody questions that, see that, I got, I got sources that backing me up. But I'd like to know why is it why do you want to do something if the apparent purpose of the end if the end is to create waste? What's the purpose of that? You are, is this really what you want? Why are we doing this? <laughs> All right. Now some of the downside effects. I was going to focus mostly on ecological issues, but being a labor organizer, let's not forget one of those, Tim, one of those wonderful aspects of the holiday is low pay for seasonal employees with no benefits. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too. Um, here it is, just came out last week, I posted this uh, on the union sites, but this is this wage theft. It's going on as, as big and as bold as ever. Uh, it's at 15 billion dollars. Merry Christmas, that's how much they steal from you here. The off the clock violations, believe you me, in, in retail this goes on all the time. Tip violations, misclassifications. Okay, and what kind of jobs, honestly, what kind of jobs does this, do you benefit by this increased employment? Getting up to dress like an elf? <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. This is embarrassing. Love your parents. You went to college. You had the kids and the college kids end up doing this, you know. I wouldn't tell my parents anyhow. Anyhow, the fight for 15 is still going on. That is matter of fact, regarding the holidays, the fight for 15 movement began among the retail clerks of the department stores. I was at the first rally and it was on the Magnificent Mile downtown uh, if by, by that big building. And it was started for people in the retail business around the holidays. It was around Christmas that we had the, the rally. Later on it branched out and incorporated uh, the employees of fast food firms and so forth. But its origin uh, was uh, in retail Christmas sales. Another aspect of the holiday, and one that if any of you have studied child psychology, uh, this is what they like. That, yeah, let's inculcate children with blind obedience to authority, and you will get rewarded. Just, yeah, don't, don't use your brain, don't have an intellect, don't make decisions. But if you obey, those who obey will be rewarded. This is, this is what you want to teach children, right? You better be good. You better be good. Authoritarian figure, right? Yeah, that's the way it's structured. Well, capital society is structured that way. So I guess that's why they want you to learn that. Another thing about Christmas, do we really need a, a celebration encouraging intoxication? Yeah. There's a way out. People getting, hey, by the way, don't ever. I've represented employees. Do not go to any holiday parties at your place of employment. <laughs> Take my word for it. Find something else to do, but never, ever go to any of these parties, and particularly if there's alcohol at those things. Okay, another thing. I, I actually had some articles on this on our Chicago Greens pages. I was involved in this. But why is this, no, you think, oh, let's say, I was thinking that song, Bing Crosby, uh, uh, it's a wonderful white Christmas, you know. You know, uh, why, actually, it's been, this, there were studies that were done uh, to try to ascertain why the snow is dirty. Now, I think it's going <laughs> to snow tomorrow, so I highly recommend, actually, I was involved a little bit in the study. You take cubic feet of snow, and then you melt it down, and you see what's in it. Please go outside and see why is it gray, 
or is it speckled with black dots? But take a look at it. Uh, but those on the south side will know what I'm talking about. No, I'm not telling me against the holiday. I believe, however, it went in the wrong direction. Now there was a time you went out with the grand, grandpa, you know, I did this when I lived in a rural area. We went out to the woods. I found a nice tree, you know, a chop that took it home. It was kind of fun. You know, we had the apple stuff, apple juice or whatever. You know, at least to start, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of nice, you know. And I like this too. I actually had this as a picture puzzle. Yeah, people would take mild trips and visit their loved ones. That's not bad. I'm not averse to that, you know. People visiting uh, grandma and, you know, their parents that, that you know, that's nice. And take the Union Pacific Railroad, like these people. Railroad's there to take you there. Also, it's a bit of an, its origins, despite what all you want to say, uh, you know, is, an, is a uh, green holiday rooted in nature. There's Santa Claus. You know, he was uh, uh, Yeah. But I'll tell you, that's what it used to be but until until corporate media got got their hands on Santa Claus. And they gave him a commercial transformation. And Santa Claus, instead of living in the woods in the wild, he now lives in a department store and drinks Coca-Cola. But they, see, he wasn't good enough. They, they couldn't leave him alone, you know? Friendly old guy, you know, the little old, you know, the, 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 the mythical character. Now we gotta, you know. But another thing is here, uh, another reason I'm, we've gotta be very upset about the holiday, is children are transformed into customers. That's exactly what they do. You should see, some, watch some of the advertising on the children's stations. Now, I must admit that looking at this thing, this guy, now many, many years ago, there was a young fellow much like him, and I, I own a, an engine for my Lionel train, identical to that one, a Pennsylvania engine, and it did start me on the beginning of a career in transportation area. <laughs> Other than that, uh, yes, it is. They have targeted children, obviously, uh, uh, the merchandising. Now, pretty soon, they got to keep making money. There, there's no the insatiable appetite of the capitalists for dollars. They're going to push it back. You're going to start hearing these these songs right after uh, Labor Day. I guarantee you, it's going to get that way. Um, What's going to happen? Choppers are going to spend one trillion dollars. Now I talked about pollution. You worried about Jan, the styrofoam container. These people are spending a trillion dollars on stuff that's going to end up in the dump. But I just came across this one UK parent. A mom said she's going to spend a one thousand pounds on each of her kids. That's over thousand dollars. Uh, by the way, Americans this year this are expected to shop a lot because of the holiday falling on the 22nd. That's the earliest date for Fourth Thursday, meaning you got a long holiday season to, to get out there and spend. I mean, we've covered some of this before. Uh, commercial activities have replaced older humanistic ones. So instead of being with your family on Thanksgiving, people got to jump on it. And, bid their family goodbye and got over to the store to get the four hour deals <coughs> from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. I'll see you later, Mom. Anyhow, just to go ahead and get over this real quickly here, this figure varies over year, but I'm basically about 750 bucks is spent per per capita on this holiday stuff. The one thing I like about this is um, uh, people that go Christmas shopping I, I don't have the figures in here, but I think about as much as 20% of the people, the money that is spent on Christmas gifts are spent on the people, on the person doing the Christmas shopping. So they buy stuff for themselves. 
<laughs> they go out to buy it. <laughs> and they find something they like. They buy it instead of, you know. Well, <laughs> they'll spend one fifth of the money on themselves. Forget the parents and the kids, you know. <laughs> All right. And there's some kind of the mania. This woman is kind of famous. She's. she's <laughs> <laughs> Desperate to get in the Walmart. Oh, <laughs> Look at this. What is this woman doing here? It's just crazy. What is this? <laughs> oh, yeah, materialism, we talked about this at the philosophy group, has become the, the central focus. And intangible values have been discarded. We got no time for that, man. Well, this is where we're at. Stuff under the tree. Look at that. They had to put the tree up on. I like this one. They had to put the tree up in the air. They ran out. The tree. Put the tree in the background. Care who made stupid trees? You know. This is amazing. Yeah, I was talking earlier with Jim. I see this all the time. They're now advertising cars as gifts. It's like the top fifth. Who gives a car as a gift? You know. I mean. You know, that's ridiculous. You know, <laughs> they even have a commercial where the guy buys one for his wife and one for himself. He just wanted different colors. <laughs> I never got a car. <laughs> I got cheated. No one ever gave me a car. <laughs> All right. Now, here's some of the other things. We'll get along with our philosophy, our intangibles here. Have less of the more campaign has been around for a few years. Explore other activities. There's other things to do in life. Uh, this pretend people that think they're busy, that's like pretending their life has meaning. Just vapid kind of empty busyness, you know. Here's Bob, there's a plug for your book. The choice is yours, either celebrate Christmas or have a meaningful life. Buy a book. Now if you buy his book and give it as a gift, that's okay. <laughs> it's a good book. Is that all? That's a, that's a good stocking stuffer. Put me down for a couple. All right, Tim. We've shown these before. This is what Christmas capitalism has created. These people are making it possible for you and I to celebrate Christmas. Will you will take a look at this? Is, is this? You think this is... This, I couldn't... My first time I saw this, I said, that's not real. That's like... You know, oh boy, the employer, yeah, they gave you some time off, you know. That little Joe's Toy Company, you know. Give you, yeah, your little time there, you know. We, but we got to get the toys out there. If you notice here, all these people are wearing masks. Uh, we'll get into why they're doing that. Um, but these are all toy men. They're all making toys. Um, here's the details here. I'll read it for you. They generally work 13 to 15 hour days. Oh, one day off a week. And during the peak season, you only get one day off a month. Uh, uh, all, all night shifts, 16 to 19 hours. Oh, with the minimum wage of a whopping 41 cents an hour. And you've got to do 8,920 toys a day if you want to get that. Uh, if you miss your quota, you get a dollar and 48 cents a day. Uh, this is for real. These are the data from the ILO, International Labor Organization. Fines, you get one minute late. Ten minutes late, you get 370. You'll get fined. If you're ten minutes late, you get fined an entire way of day's pay. Is that in China? Yeah. What countries are those? I'd have to look it up. It's all over. It's, it's, not, it's not unique. To, let's say Asia. I don't think it's unique to any country. Another thing, I'll get into plastics. All right. Now we're going to get into the eco topics, as I promised you. But we're never ever more than three feet away from something made of plastic. Uh, and the fossil fuels are transformed into iPhone <coughs> cases, Legos, or Barbie costumes. Uh, using 244 million tons of toxic chemicals a year. There are no really inherently safe raw plastics. And this is the important thing. If you carry on it, many of the additives 
that give the items, like toys, properties that they want, colors, and so forth, are the chemicals most likely to give off gas and leach out. Believe you me, they've had shipments that they try to sneak into customs. Custom agents caught it, and they, they, they destroyed the entire shipment. This stuff is lethal. It is not as hazardous to one's health. Uh, let's see here. We'll go on to the next one here. Now, the main types of raw materials, I'll read this so you don't have to, to make plastic are fossil products, such as crude oil, natural gas, though it can be made with soy, corn, or hemp. Hemp, you, hey, are you awake there? Where's the hemp guy? He's looking at his iPod. Um, but these, these compounds contain hydrocarbons that can be processed into plastic uh, by cracking processes. There's some, there's some good crude oil coming to your house. Now what do they do and what do they make out of plastic? Potentially hazardous toys. Now it's inherently bad plastic or it's designed poorly. We're going to see one of those here. But every year. Another thing that goes into these toys that we don't seem, you don't have to read all this, and anyhow the batteries, which I don't know if a lot of people are recycling or not. I use recycling services. Recycling but, will never save the earth. Well, well, batteries, uh, we were talking about what to do with your batteries. Um, I bring them into work if we have a recycling program. But I think most people pitch it. And uh, the thing about lithium, it talks about it here, lithium ion batteries are less stable than the old lead batteries, and they can be burst in flame, they burst into flame if bent or punctured. And it's likely to happen in landfills where fault or bulldozers and loaders put stuff around. So not only are we disposing of uh, these batteries, the landfills, but they're causing them to fire. Now I was looking around at what are the hot toys this year, and I'm glad to see that you can buy any number of these products to fight off zo a potential attack of zombies. So your child can learn how to do this. I like this one here. This is a chainsaw. It looks like a chainsaw gun. Wait, and you can get a machete. <laughs> what kind of things are this to teach children? What happened to teddy bears and stuff like that? <laughs> this, this is what we need this holiday for, you know? Oh, another thing, high on the list of things is clothing, of course, still. You know, you can rush right out. You get you some, some stuff from the Ivana Trump line, made in China, if you look there. You know, oh, I like this here. This is one way they can tell how much you're working there. And I, and I'm not kidding you. Look at this. The guy can tell immediately if you're if you're sitting around or you're putting things out. This is manufacturing. This is. But electronics. This is job. This is manufacturing. It's a job. Yeah, yeah, and a sweat shop. Yeah, sure. Save it for the rebuttals. Yeah, good luck. You know, go to work in one there. All right, the next area I'm going to cover on ecology is electronic. Uh, the, uh, now, we've been over this. I gave a lecture on Transcon and some of the other factories. But five, one Transcon place has 5,000 employees. It never stops day or night. And the workers are in shifts. They rotate. And electronic devices are still done primarily by hand due to the high cost and difficulty of automation. And there you see, those are the working conditions. There you go, right in line there. You know, this is this is meaningful occupation. You know, this is what we've got a little better than robotics. And a topic that's growing in, in more and more interest and meritoriously so is e-waste. This is you're talking about oh how wonderful the iPhones are. Everyone has got one, you got to buy one. Yeah, and then it ends up here. Um, what do you do this? You know, you got every 18 months, right, or less, you've got to upgrade your computer, throw it in the alley, you know, or something like that. What people don't realize is the high cost of consumption of each person requires 
40 tons of freight a year. This is a high consumption lifestyle we've got. 40 tons a year. Now what utilitarian purpose? I've actually seen these ships in Oakland. This is amazing. What's the, where is these? You know. Is this the best use of our transportation system? Anyhow, and Amazon, the worst employer in the world, where people can't, can't work more than six months. So if you make it six months in one of these places, you're a hardy, hardy person. But that's, that's a place where you got to wear the electronic thing where they follow you around and report on your whereabouts. We had uh, Joe here, uh, Teamster Joe, and I know about this again for the contract, but UPS uh, is using this two-tier system. You know, uh, and believe you me, they, they, it's not to the workers' advantage. They're cheating half the workforce, if not more of the employees. I ran into one last night, about 9 o'clock, delivering a package. He was an employee, you know, using a U-Haul truck. Anyhow, another effect, uh, beneficial effect of Christmas is, at least under the capitalist system, is the homogenization of the, of, of the United States. It used to be he lived on a main street, you know, and there'd be a store. There actually was a, a toy store in my neighborhood. Two of them, to be precise, they no longer exist because uh, you can go to Walmart, a big box retailer. That's the transformation. Now, okay, we'll move on to another one there. In 2017, 27.4 million trees will be cut, purchased, and then discarded. 27 point, that's a lot of trees. Now the other thing is, say, artificial trees, oh, that's much better. But they contain non-biodegradable plastics and perhapsable metal toxins such as lead. And again, another 20-some million fake trees uh, are going to be purchased. And just for a point of information regarding nature, it takes 15 years to grow a typical tree. So you can have, oh, invite your petals over, you know. Why can't we just leave nature alone? Just leave nature. It does, does it bother you? Now the other thing about tree farms, oh, we say, well, we're planting trees. But a tree farm, I assure you, is not a forest. Now the other thing about global warming and trees is a little of a side. They took bonsai trees and they put them in a container and they showed real bright lights on it which they thought would be like global climate under global warming. And they did this for a month or so. And then they discovered that the, uh, the trees did not seed. Uh, they were sterile. And the, the, what do you call it, the, the pores? Uh, the, but in fact, they had no seeds. And it was the, it won, that was the end of the, the tree as a, as a forest. Then they took the trees out and they left them outside just where just the normal and they came back and seeded just like any normal tree. But the thing that, that was a very enlightening experiment to show that the, actually the, the end of forest, as we know, it would be like what, a year or two um, of climate, global warming. There you get to see, and one of my favorite poems I send out is uh, Whitsman Spare That Tree, Touching Out a Single Bow. In youth it sheltered me, and I'll protect it now. Thank you. But anyhow, another thing we do with decorations, it used to be that, you know, simple decorations were pretty su sufficient, uh, but then with along technology, brought us uh, the brightest Christmas ever from General Electric. And we got people doing this these days, you know, which is next to ridiculous. You know, or this guy, uh, or this, oh, this is Lincoln Park. Uh, but, uh, all right, now the last, we're almost done. But uh, one thing, uh, you were, there's, there's a vague in here, but uh, turkey production around Thanksgiving and Christmas, we're talking about 45 million birds.
tell you, say she ate the appetite. Then are overfed so I can't even walk. Right. Pass the turkey leg, like, please. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we ought to put you, David, in this that little cage in that truck. Company. Yeah, third row from the left. That's where you're going to end up, pal. <laughs> That's where you're going to Dave, look at these are the good kids. We're going to try to get them here. It's not food, it's violence, man. Get it. Now, another thing is, you know, that's the oldest float, float in the Macy's Parade. I used to live where, where they came to get it, Central Park West. That's the oldest float, but I found this the other day on the on the internet. Consume, they redid it. <laughs> and the last one is gift wrapping and packaging waste. Well, this, this is another thing we really need. Okay, what do you do with this stuff? Your Joe, Joe Recycling Center. You can that money. You can't even do. What are you gonna do with this? It's dead end. <laughs> Landfill time. Look at this. How much garbage are you gonna? What are you gonna get that's end up as garbage? You know. <laughs> and this, by the way, you may not realize this. We don't do this in the Midwest here, but out east and other parts of the country. This is a container train of garbage, compressed garbage. They have to ship it to other areas, such as the East Coast. I see this all the time in D.C. and other cities. Yes. Now, is this the world that you want? Ask yourself that question. I'll give you a moment to answer silently to yourself. Is this the world that you want? Uh, now, if I gave you, I got a couple hints. If you go to the site of the Chicago Greens, you can find all of these listed right at the top of the page, the link, so we don't need to it. There's a card with the info on that. It's IllinoisGreens.org. There's some of the things you don't, you don't have to be a burden on the environment. With a little effort and imagination, you can reduce the environmental impact of the holiday. But here's some ideas from Chuck. Because I like you folks, and I, I think you're good people. You can do this. Anyhow, buy less. That's easy. <laughs> buy smart. Really think green. You know, look for recycled gifts, battery-free gifts, you know. And re-gifting is okay. That's an amazing one. Connect with nature. If you want to more stuff to do on Christmas, go in the woods to go to take a walk. You know, you don't need all this other artificial stuff. You know, uh, decorate a tree for the birds, you know. I visit with my friend, Mr. Squirrel. He comes around every day looking for some nuts. I give him. Lower the impact of holiday lighting. Use LED lights, mini lights, and turn them off, you know. You can get a live tree. <coughs> you know, spruce pine, whatever. Also, the alternative to wrapping paper. Uh, use environmental friendly wrapping paper, reuse it. Use it. By the way, I actually came across one where somebody recommended using CTA transit maps that have been out of date as wrapping paper. Because uh, I've got a whole bunch of them if anybody needs some. But anyhow, reuse and recycle uh, ribbons, bows, whatever, and electronics and your trees, of course. And if you want, I highly recommend, if you want, just give up on Christmas. Celebrate Earth Day. It's a lot more fun, but more <laughs> Don't listen to this guy. He's an idiot. <laughs> He's going, he knows nothing. And last of all, uh, considering Thursday was it, I'll end with this. Uh, people over profits. This is how retailers do it. Uh, these 14 stores refuse to give their employees Thanksgiving Day off. You know. So we're boycotting them. So anyhow, I turn it over to you. Pat. All right, let's thank Charlie. Right. 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 What you left out is how much there's, there's some Republicans. The we're going to re, we're going to address that specifically next. For those of you next. who may be new to the procedure here, uh, we everybody gets three or four minutes or something to list the high points of 
of what the speakers left out oh, in the rebuttal period. Also, good. we have a question and answer period, so if you could uh, kind of avoid uh, shouting out things at the speaker, it, it would help. Uh, so, uh, Charlie was our first presenter. Now we have the legendary, famous Tim Bolger, uh, who is absolutely legendary for giving us tutorials on capitalism. So we're looking forward to it. Give everybody, everybody, give Tim a big hand. All right. Well, Charlie, I've never, I do agree with you in a lot of ways about some about things about Christmas and how we may go extinct but there are ways to handle this oh. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to play here or not Let's see if it goes he's got me it's a Grinch yeah oh, just trying to see it okay here we go you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as tough as an eel, Mr. Grinch. Why do we need to celebrate Christmas? The College of Complexes for November 24th. But the first thing I want to address is some of these environmental concerns that Charlie does. And the first, it's not conservation, but innovation like renewables, green technology, clean nuclear, and others that are really going to save the planet. We have melted glaciers that cut summer water. We can agree with that, that there's a lot going on with the planet. We also have, uh, like I said, melted glaciers, cut some more water, but again, we can deal with this. I agree with Charlie on many of his points about Christmas. Climate change is a problem. Energy consumption is a problem. Consumerism is a problem. But you know, Dennis Meadows in Limits to Growth modeled fine, model defects to finite resources. And as you can see here, there's a little bit of a line that says we might run out. But I really don't think we're going to run out. And of course, resource competition can also lead to war. But I'll tell you something. All in all, prosperity really is a good thing. Because prosperity stabilizes population. As you get over $8,000 a year, kids no longer become a source of labor they, or a source of retirement. They become a cost. You know, Johnny goes home. Johnny gets raised. He has to now got the college expense. Then you got the expense of him coming back after his first job when he gets into money problems. And a lot of times you may not even get out till he's 30. Maybe one or two kids is a good thing, but you're not going to see eight, nine, ten kids. There's a stable replacement rate at about 2.3 children per woman. And prosperity at over $8,000 per year gives you basically your population reduction as you're looking. Prosperity, however, depends on energy. And with nations of populations over 10 million, like here, versus down here, they usually prosper the more energy they have. Prosperity, energy, and it usually can do it. So in the long run, you're better off with consumption, jobs, manufacturing, capitalism going the way it goes because it'll re eventually reduce population because it's so expensive to raise kids. And as the rest of the world does, it's projected to go way down by 2050. Yes, we're going to have a society of old people. And I believe within 10 years we'll be paying workers to come into our country because they're not going to want to leave where they're at because they'll be getting prosperous too. The thing is, energy use is growing rapidly in developing nations. Coal, uh, nuclear, everything else. And the other thing is, coal burning is increasing sharply in developing nations. 
your container. Now, what the hell does this have to do with Christmas? Basically, technology is more important than carbon taxes. If we try to restrain emissions without a new set of technologies, we will end up stifling economic development, including the development for prospects for billions of people. We will need much more than a price on carbon. Technologies developed in a rich world but de adopted rapidly by poor ones. Ford, for example, has just basically made a fueled internal combustion engine with hydrogen. And of course me, I think the most important thing that can be done is the thorium molten salt reactor. Yes, I had to put it in obviously. You guys all know my views on thorium and what, what I think it could do. Charlie says they're going to be running out of oil in 150 years. Well, we got a 5,000 year supply of thorium. I'll get into that maybe in a question and answer period. You have one working reactor. So I'm going to say this. Merry Christmas, Earth and its peoples. We need to celebrate new technology and innovation, much like giving the planet a Christmas gift. Merry Christmas, Earth and its people. The solutions are coming. Here's the real reason we celebrate Christmas, however. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Messiah, the Lord. Many of us from a Christian faith firmly believe that he died for our sins and that he has made much more of an impact on our society, including the celebration of Christmas. Now we all know it started out as a pagan holiday under the Romans for a while and the Catholic Church kind of adopted it over time. But really, Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. What all have in common is an appreciation of kindness and compassion. All religions have this. We all lean towards love. That's according to Richard Gere. And frankly, in a sense, I believe it. Why do we celebrate Christmas? It's a time of the year when the best of humanity is exhibited. Jesus is the reason for the season. I already covered that. You can cultivate those precious family and friend relationships. And primarily, we think about ourselves and not others. You see, the whole reason for gift giving, the whole reason for having friendships, the whole reason to celebrate Christmas is basically for the real reasons that we all want to be better human beings, we all value the relationships, and we're all having very busy lives. Yes, I think it's great we celebrate Christmas. I think it's great that the retailers get about 60% of their business during the retail time because that produces jobs. That's what helps people get out of poverty. And yes, Charlie did say those sweatshop conditions in China were, are there, but they won't be much longer as China grows and prospers. Besides, being at one of those factory jobs for a young person is a heck of a lot better than being in your collectivist farm or socialist deal or even under a collective farm. Are you sure? Oh, I'm sure, Charlie. And you ask many a people why China's having a mass exodus into the cities. And this process is not new, Charlie. It happened way back in London, right around the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. That's why they had trade guilds to, to bring so that the people who came into the city wouldn't interfere with their jobs. And they also, this whole cycle has gone on before. Whether you like oil or not, the air of London is probably the cleanest it's been in 300 years. You don't have the horse dung, you don't have the coal smoke, you don't have the other things. And a lot of that power is being made by nuclear. Um, and I think the biggest reason though for Christmas and the reason we need to celebrate it is I think we all need a good holiday. We all need a good time of year. And this has been in measurable cultures since the fruit, since the festival of the harvest, to China's uh, Chinese New Year. They also have one called, uh, I think it's called a. Uh, no, it's 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 called a. Uh, some type of day where they all go to their graves to respect their relatives. Day of the Dead. Yeah, and there's a lot of others. 
But we as a species need a holiday. We need a break. And if we don't celebrate it ourselves, and sometimes there's good reason to go into that forest preserve. Sometimes there's good reason to do other things during Christmas. There's th times when you need to read books and, and take a break and refresh and relax yourselves. And I think with the proper celebration of Christmas, which basically means goodwill to all, freedom for all, goodwill towards men, I think we got a winning holiday. <laughs> All right, we got to go for questions now. All right. All right, Andy. Charlie, you're going to come up for questions? Is it questions and answer period for everybody? Yes. Okay, we're going to have the questions and answer periods now for maybe 15 minutes or so. And then we'll have the famous rebuttal period. So collect your thoughts and uh, if you'd like to add a few things that our speakers didn't add, uh, you'll have time during the rebuttal period. All right. Okay. Three dollars. Uh, first question. Yeah, I got a question. All right, Charlie. Yeah, the population is projected by the year 2060 there be one billion people on the planet Earth. Are you telling me there's some sort of technology out there that can provide food, clothing, and shelter for that many people? No, Charlie, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying, yeah, okay, yeah, there is an invention out there. It's called global capitalism. It's called basically, Charlie, people will find a way to get prosperous. And if we deny the poor countries today of our own tools that we use to prosper, we are more hypocritical than any generation in history. I firmly believe it. We need development. We need to get people who haven't had a chance to prosper to do so. In a book written by Johann Norberg, he says, today we are at the best we've ever been. Illiteracy rates are down. Abject poverty rates are down. Um, people are living longer. And a lot of times we focus too much on the negative. But I think in the terms of human health, human um, existence, we are much better off than we were even 50 years ago. All right, next question, please. No questions. Oh, God. All right, I'll ask I got questions. All right, Yolanda. So, Tim, what's your opinion about those, what Charlie showed this nice slide about manufacturing in uh, occupation that work in China, like huge, you know, for Christmas or whatever they do, huge, crowded, you know, in the factories? What's All right, your the question was in relating to um, the technology for. Yeah. A manufacturing? Yeah. China's doing what we did after World War II and, and before. They're manufacturing stuff. They're making stuff. They're making laptops. They're making things. They're actually following our old formula to prosper. Yeah. The thing that you don't have in China, though, is, a lot of, is, is the freedom in a lot of cases. It's still a big state-directed economy. But where they've let freedom in and they've let the, the capitalism be more capitalistic than state controlled. They're actually growing by quite a bit. There's also been a lot of infrastructure spending. But at one time, we were doing this. And it's time, I think, that America does it again. All right, next question, please. Yes. Um, this is uh, for uh, Charles. All right. Tim had uh, 
Tim had said there's a direct correlation between uh, a decrease in uh, the children held by a family and uh, in prosperity, the amount of income the family makes. My, my understanding is that the correlation is really between how well educated a woman is mm -hmm. determines how little. And uh, I was wondering if you could comment on that. Do you think it's it's income, or do you think it's educated women that's keeping? I I'm sorry. Uh, it was this that I that was not. I have nothing. You don't have any comment on what? You don't think that's uh? You think that? You think that position of his is valid or invalid or? Do you have no oh, comment? his position. Yeah. I found almost none of it valid. I mean, uh, he, he's using children as, I hate to say this, you know, like how much do children cost? You know, hey, you know, he's using like a capitalist approach. How much, and you want to calculate, you know, like, like, like an audit of children, you know, how much do children cost? You know, I, I, I don't know if that's something, you know, now Raj is always yelling that people, now there is an issue about people having children for whom they are unable to provide. And the libertarians raise this issue. Like, why should I be responsible for somebody else's children? Now, as a humanist, or secular humanist, how would you answer that? Um, to, are we one community uh, together, acting together? Uh, rather, computations about you know, I, I you know his computations. I I don't give them much credibility there. Um, people are going to reproduce, and we're going to have some things, Karina here who talks more about demographics is, you know. Um, but, uh, I mean, he skirted the issue here that we're going to produce one billion people. And I've got to have one half of the technology um, that's going to provide for all those people. We're kind of maxed out on providing for people. Matter of fact, we're not doing too good at providing for people right now a little on the highest figures. Huh? He maintains that somehow, I don't worry uh, that perhaps in major industrialized nations, the population is going down, but the rest of the planet is going up. And I don't know any more than that. Develop, Charlie. But to say here, here this is a technology is the solution to everything, right? He, he's, you know, like un, uh, inventions that haven't been made yet are going to solve our problems. Well, what kind of response is that? Well, you know, providing food for individuals, transport, you need a transportation network. Do you realize you're going to need a transportation network about 10 times the size of the one you got? Who's going to buy this? Who's going to pay for this? We don't know what we're talking about. But I don't know if that answers your question, David. I, you know, I think it was more his, his data that you were referring to. I didn't have to talk too much about that. Outside of, don't teach your kids to be obedient, you know, wants to get prizes. Okay. I got a question for you. All right, Charlie, a question for me then. Now, you said if you, uh, you mentioned you, if you asked the, the kids working in that factory, or in that clothing sweatshop, you said, only if you ask them, do you know, is there any reason why they sent labor, Illinois labor representatives, uh, labor representatives over to these Asian countries, and you know, you're not allowed in those plants. I know. No one has ever gotten into one of those locations to talk to the employees. They're stopped at the gate. Uh, those, those pictures even, there's a question about how they're even gotten out. Those are about the only ones in existence. They're, they Now, I don't know what they got. So if everything is so wonderful behind the factory gates of those places, why are they keeping it such a secret? And then if the employees talk about anything uh, when they're off work or anything like that, they even tried to approach employees 
after work, and they were just fearful of saying anything. Now you're telling me they're afraid to talk about the conditions of employment. They won't let people in the seat. And you you want that expanded? I need it. You don't know what's going on in here, do you? Do you have, let me answer your question. Do you have any idea what's going on in there? Oh, okay. All right. You gonna steal it? Yeah, it's over there. Let's steal it. You see, Charlie, I don't like sweatshops either. I don't like the peace count system, but I think you just answered your own question. That's why we need labor laws. That's why we need unions. That's why we need regulations. We've got it in the states. And that's another reason why we have to update our trade agreements to for a worldwide solution to the problem. Well, they're not going to follow. And the thing is, is that uh, right now, China's one of the manufacturing countries of the world. The other thing that you can do is make sure you know where your stuff is sourced when you buy it. You go to Walmart, yes, it's a cheap place to get your goods, but a lot of that stuff that Walmart does with its practices is somewhat reprehensible. But now, but I'll tell you what it does take. You will have a vote where you go to buy your stuff. If you want local businesses prospering, you hand them this. No, you don't. You have a credit card. Or, or a credit card. Or, and if you like a place that's sustainable, goods that are sustainable, buy them. Use them. You like locally produced food, you go and you buy it. There'll be a demand. If you as a consumer consistently go to the cheapest place at the cheapest price and don't look for quality, shame on you. If you have the means, Take a look around and buy wisely. Do you blame the consumer? No, I don't blame For the consumer. Sweatshops? But Charlie, I will say one thing. There are a lot of people in China who consider a job at one of those sweatshops far better than being stuck in their family local village to an eon of existence with subsistence farming. That's the difference. Now. As the country grows and prospers, automation kicks in, jobs start getting a lot better. Look at the, look at the situation with Singapore, for example. They were, at the same time, just less than 50 to 60 years ago, a backward country. They did something called land reform. Gave the land to their local uh, farmers and, and whatnot. And what they did with it was they were also able to open up the capital markets where they could bank, where they could prosper. But anyway, at, and they had very loose capital laws, but they did have a code of conduct that most of the people provided. You know, you don't cheat, you don't steal. And yes, they did have an iron fist dictator for the first uh, 60 years, but they prospered. Capitalism was allowed to flourish. And they don't have many sweatshops anymore. And I think as England doesn't have as many sweatshops anymore. Yes, there will be cases where they have the modern day slavery, but in some ways, the best way to stop it is to let capitalism and development flourish. With more energy, we can recycle a lot more. We can, with prosperity, we can have national parks, national reserves, and keep them pristine through something called the forest rangers. We can have a sustainable economy. And as a matter of fact, there are more trees now in the US than there was in 1775 because of you know a lot of this stuff. I could go on and on, but you need a holiday. Let's let's get I, is there any more questions? Yeah, I do. Okay. I would like uh, both of you to comment. Uh, you really haven't gotten at the most powerful thing that there is. The what? You really have not gotten at the most powerful wow. thing that there is, and you danced around it a little bit. Okay, you're talking about... Go ahead. That quote on the board. Yes. Change one word. Change the word take to give. To give unconditional love. Right. 
in everything that you do. Right. I'd like both of you to comment on that. Okay. I think our gentleman is absolutely right. And I did neglect to mention it. Go ahead, Charlie. I I think, with all due respect to my friend here, he's got some notion that I think the term for it is teleological, meaning like capitalism begins and it's very bad, but somehow there's some transformation and it becomes good. I don't know what this transform transformative activity is. Then why is it bad in the beginning? It is bad. This sweatshop is not good. Those factories are not pleasant places. No one wants to work 19 hours a day at those at those you know, at, at a rate that they are demanding. That's I'm sorry. There's no way you can make sugarcoat that into being a positive thing. Now you come up with this notion that prosperity is right around the corner, which is not the case. It is also unrealistic that you're going to come in and bring some reform. I went to a lecture there about a woman from India who was in one of those sweatshops, maybe even one that was in one of these photographs here, but she tried to engage in an organized labor for improvement of the conditions of employment, and she found herself accused of murder. And that's when she was on the lam and hiding in the United States from her arrest back home, thoughtful that she could return home. This is the real world out there. And you think it's, you just, oh, well, we get together and, like, when? And it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't mean anything. Unconditional love. You talk to these CEOs, you think they got, I'm going to talk, listen, humanistic appeal has no relevance to these guys. I've negotiated with them, they don't listen, they wouldn't listen to you. You say, oh, well, it's the right thing to do. What's that? They wouldn't know what you're talking about. That's why they're CEOs. Walmart family is the richest family in the United States. And their workers don't make the $15 that you saw in one of those things. Now, if you're the richest family, you say, well, why, why don't we just like have, like, they want these 15, like, give it, no, they won't for use. They say, well, aren't you, you're the easiest ones that could give it. And they refuse, they will not listen to you. As a matter of fact, I've negotiated so many contracts and any appeal to them. Better nature of their angels doesn't work. They don't listen to you. They want facts, figures, and they got to be forced to do it. That's the real world. No negotiation. I'm serious. If I, if I was an engineer, I heard some appeal to that. They don't, that's like me and you lost. If that's why you got to ask, but they don't listen to this. This is, this is a capitalist, man. This is, they are, these guys are cut and dry. You know? They're here to make money, make themselves rich, not anyone else. They're not in some Christmas, blah, 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 you know, stuff, you know, blessed are to charitable. Come on. They don't know what you're talking about, you know. Hey, anyway, all right, Timmy. All right. I'm done. I do one, more, one more question. Yes. I'll start Charlie. Charlie, what about spirit? What about food for the soul? What about family? What about refreshing yourself so you can appreciate your family? Well, you, you don't need all the, your family. You don't need materialism. What about, what about all those things that are good? And, and what you're complaining about is yes, the materialism. Yeah. And I agree with that, the materialism. But the spirit is, at, what about children? What have they got to get excited about or to look forward to? It used to be a Christ child. Now it's a little fat man in a beard, but they, that brings the spirit of it to life in the in, in a person. You're just talking about what that they get stuff, chemicals, that's and sciences. I don't, and I don't know if that's spirit. And chemicals that make what, up a human what being. What am I gonna get? Spirit. Every human being has a spirit, and it needs. To and you're trying to get 
be gracious in receiving spirit or what? Well, actually, you need spirit. You what do you mean? Why do you, what do you define this? this? Is humanism? But this is actually getting material items. They get well, an, a tangible item. Take that out of the equation. But you're saying leave it in because it makes children happy to get yeah. stuff. I well, think it, I agree that's the only way they can achieve happiness. Cut it way back. We don't need it. <laughs> But, yeah, I it's mean, not Christmas. It's all right. You know, I, you know, I, being together is, you know, but you don't need this carrot and stick <laughs> that they uh, have. Yeah, so be good, and you'll, good and you'll get rewarded. Okay. Mr. Travis, that'll be our last question. Thank you. Uh, isn't, isn't it a fact that in the last forty years that you uh, may have learned? that it is in favor of capitalism, of management, capitalism, to give the worker the best deal that they possibly can so that ultimately they get the most out of it. No, absolutely not. not never, never in the history of the capitalist system has that ever existed. Never anywhere on earth at any time. Oh, that the the, the comp give employees the best most you can. No, no, real world reality check. <laughs> Guy negotiating fifty contracts. That's not to, no, that doesn't work. Give them the best they can. No, give them the best they can out of here. <laughs> that's okay. not real. That, that's some win methodology. Right. At this point, I think you we're saw the switch shop. Right. Yes, we did. <laughs> you didn't see it. They give the boy the best switch shop you could. <laughs> They'll be happy. All right. Well, it's nice switch shop. All right. At this point, I notice people itching to jump at the bit for uh, rebuttals. Unless Charlie has anything else for her to say. No, I just want to find out what's going on in those factories. You say we just just ask them if they like it there. Those, well, I like to switch Get up. off your ass and start organizing them. <laughs> oh, I got to go overseas now. Yes, no. there's and large you corporations. Right. Maybe no. your unions could maybe, do something. Maybe you have a socialist economy from the start to get go. Right? There's no doubt that your government does need to provide some form of safety and benefits. Oh, the government's got to control some of the like stuff. They're, so they're criminals like they need police. All right. Who's got rebuttals tonight? All right. Oh, you guys got nothing to say. All right. Uh, we'll go about maybe four minutes or so, um, and or three minutes, depending. Keep it. Let's let's go three minutes because of the number of people. All right. And let's get right at it and. Uh, Let's go. Let's All thank right. Charlie again, myself again for everything. Appreciate you guys coming and uh, let's get right at it. Okay. All right. Well, Tim, your service economy sucks. We've proven that over the last 20 years. And NAFTA, and Bill Clinton got tricked into signing NAFTA. That's garbage. I gotta agree with Trump on that. That was the Boo! Boo! NAFTA sucks. And so does Trump. <laughs> I know, but he gets you know. You're a rational person, David. Trump cannot be wrong on everything, can he? Yeah. Yes, he can. Every <laughs> single thing. Pretty much. <laughs> I'm right. gonna go with the. With the easy. Andy, I hope your timing. Huh? I hope Andy's timing. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. All right. I'm sorry. And then China being most favored nations, world trade, that sucks because that brought in all the, you know, they have no, no protections in China for workers or the environment or for anything. You know, no unions, no minimum wage, no environmental, you know. And then we, you know, so we do this for Wall Street and Walmart and Target. So we get a bunch of cheap crap in here. And 40 years ago, the Chinese were all on peasant farms. They're I would, hey, I don't mind being a, I'd like to work on one of those Christmas yeah. tree farms. And why don't you go to the, why don't you go there and join Why don't I move to, get me into China. One fool at a time. 
I don't think so. Give me a passport and I'll move to Belgium or France. Wait, they don't want Americans in cool countries. They don't let us in there. All right. Okay? So anyway, your service academy that you sold us 30 years ago, guess what? It didn't work. And you're a White Sox fan. That's why the hair's all the trouble. Somebody... Theo Epstein did a good job. Get that tape. <laughs> so anyway, um, all I got to say is... I know. Since Tim put in that... that lame... Yeah. Beatles are kind of lame. If it was a Stone song, I wouldn't complain. Okay. Hurry up, we gotta get moving here, Dave. Oh, I'll get it working later. All right. Anyway, All right. you're wrong. <laughs> Charlie, I don't think, is right on his statistics. <laughs> All right. Sid Cohen. Yeah, I was uh, listening to uh, Tom Hartman about maybe a week ago, and he came out with some new statistics about workers in the United States, and about 80% of workers have, have about $1,000 left in the bank. And they're extremely insecure. There's 40, American, 40 million Americans that aren't even looking for work because they can't find it, and they're not counted. So when they tell you 3 or 4%, it's ridiculous because they don't count all the workers. You stop looking, they don't count you. You're not in the labor force because you stop looking. And another thing about capitalism, the main thing, is capitalism always look at the, at the bottom line. In other words, if they can't make a profit off something, they won't produce it, for one thing. Another thing, they don't have any use for labor unions, and labor unions are the only ones that help make progress amongst workers. And we have the, a very uh, high level of, um, of employment during the Second World War, but now, if they let's say if they go in and produce armaments, most of your armaments, the parts of them, are produced somewhere, somewhere else in the air. They're not produced here anymore. So um, wars do not make for pro prosperity any longer. Another thing, you have three people in the United States that own half of the wealth of the planet. One of them is Gates, the other one Bezos, and the other one that owns Geico. And how do they get all this money? They got all this money by super exploiting the workers that are around. Otherwise, how could they have so much wealth? You, you got a top-heavy uh, economy, and when you have anything top-heavy, eventually what's going to happen is it's, it's going to fall. And it's beginning to fall right now. The latest uh, things that are happening on the stock market, it falls about $1,000 a day. And, um, and it's been going like that for the last two weeks or so. So we might be on the uh, threshold of a Great Depression. As far as uh, Christmas is concerned, it's because everything is becoming commodified in the United States. And so in commodification, the only reason for that is to make higher and higher profits. For instance, if they could commodify water or commodify oxygen, they would do it. Anything they get a hold of becomes commodified. So they have no interest in making better worlds. The only thing that's got us out of the depression during the Great Depression was the World War II, and Roosevelt was doing pretty good on, on the, what they call a Keynesianism, that is bringing in uh, the government is the employer of last resort. So they hired a lot of workers 
through government programs. But what, what happened was that um, the uh, so-called economic royalists at that time, or the capitalists, were very fearful he's going to go into socialism. So they wouldn't go, let him go any further. That's why they needed war. This fits in, I think. 2017, we had the highest carbon dioxide concentration in for for since for the last four million years. Four of by four or five parts per million. We haven't had that for the last eight hundred thousand years. It's varied between two hundred thousand. Uh, between two and three hundred, all of a sudden it's gone way up. So it's not a matter of just not putting carbon in. We're going to have to take carbon out of the air. And if we don't, what is this? It's a sixth extension. We're going to have a seventh extension. We're not going to be around. We're not going to be around. Raj Patel. My name is Raj Patel. You are out tomorrow. If you eat a lot of food, you'll be wrong. And I, think, I celebrated my Thanksgiving at Salam Temple on Lakeshore Drive. And it was nice. Food was nice. We had a live entertainment. And a personal waiter for each table. So it, it, it was very nice. I think. Uh, Probably those who can have a good experience and they can get it, it's good. Christmas is good, all celebrations are good. But unfortunately, lots and lots of people do not have a good celebration. Either it's a Christmas or a birthday or a wedding anniversary, there are lots of issues. It is good that more and more people are eating. It is good that more and more people are in a social something, so they, they are government or organization provide them. But it is also true that uh, in America, greatest problem is probably, if it's not poverty, it's a loneliness. We are losing, we are not able to con con connect with anybody. Mar marriage is our husband, wife, they are, they don't seem to be all right together and I see lots of them. There are couples unmarried, they don't seem to be on a hinge, you talk to them, you know what's going on. But it's a badly sustained. These are the re reality of the life is that. And a lot, lots of, I, I see lots of black kids. And, and a bus, and, and 36 bus, and a 22 bus, and 151 bus. And I can see, they're not going to have a future. They're not going to have a future in a 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. I don't see. Sure, there, there will be some black people who are going to get educated and going to have good things, but that's not going to have. Lots of white people I see, I go to suburbs and I see, and they're not going to have a future, I know. Because lots of people are not getting good education. Lots of, lots of uh, the colleges, and they're churning out people who are not worth the degree they written on their paper. They are not. And America has to come out and do the job they are, um, Americans are good. When they educate, get educated, they got a good education, they are able to, they understand how to, how to navigate in a society, they understand how to create interpersonal relationship, they understand the, that, that, what is responsibility in a job is. Lots of people, lots of young people, and even older people, they don't understand job. They, 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 they think job the entitlement. They get a job, so they do a good job or not a good job, they are entitled to pay. And I'm sorry, Charlie, so it's a lot of Indian people, Union have a lot of responsibility that they say their value, okay, I'm entitled to pay whether I can go to do good work or not. And it's not true. It's that society cannot work like that. You you produce, you you get paid, I I employ very good. And he says, Mom told him one thing. That once you get a job and you decide what, what you're gonna get paid, 
then you are working for employee and he, he, he asks you to work eight, you are working eight hours. Then whatever you have to do, he asks you to do, you do it. There is no thing that I cannot do this or I cannot do that. I think society has to be better. We have to train it better and do it better. Thank you. He doesn't you. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. He, he does for eight hours, eight hours a time he pays you for. Okay, he may not own you at home, but he pays you, the, he owns you there. And do you know, lots of people are coming out right now. I know, guy. Right now, lots of people are coming out, they're getting fired because they did something wrong out of the job. They are CEO losing jobs. So it's not like that, there's no responsibility. There's always a responsibility. Thank you. All right. Um. Quick comment about Christmas. My prediction is that eventually Christmas will be uh, declared a non-holiday because it goes against the constitution of the government endorsing religion. Um, the trend right now is the fastest growing uh, uh, religious belief is atheism. Thanks to the internet, kids are no longer indoctrinated by their families, but by uh, what's on the internet, and so you have a lot of the young generation who are non-religious. Um, on, on, to make a comment that's more focused on uh, the discussion tonight, I don't think that Christmas is really an issue when it comes to being good or bad to, for society, but I think it's a symptom of a bigger problem, and that is consumerism. I think that consumerism is bad for society. We have. Uh, um, you know, in the last 10 years, all this great wealth that we're talking about, we're creating, it's all going to the top 5%. The, the people on the bottom aren't seeing any of that money. And uh, it's just disingenuous to say that it's good for the country when it, when it doesn't help, like, a super majority of the country. Um, companies aren't motivated by doing the wrong thing. The, the, the only way a company is motivated is if they lose money or is if they make money. Um, an example of this is uh, when the pharmaceutical companies uh, were making a uh, were making painkillers out of an opioid-based product, and uh, their motivation is how do we make money? You increase your market share, you increase sales. And they thought about it, and they sent out their salesmen to the docks, and they came up with new ways to sell more drugs, which was to sell drugs to people that weren't recommended for the drug, because the drug is highly addictive, it's very dangerous, if not properly prescribed. And what happened? Now we have this huge social cost that's created because a corporation is motivated to make money. They made a tons of money, and it didn't cost them anything, but it cost society a huge amount. Um, another example is the big uh, BP oil spill in the Gulf. Uh, they wanted to save money by cutting safety protocols, and what happened, it was this costing the government billions of dollars, negatively affecting all the people in that region, uh, tourism and, um, and the fishing industry, and, um, you know, it cost us a lot. It doesn't cost them anything. The worst example is uh, mortgage bankers who go out and say, how do we make more money? And they come up with all these... Um, these investment instruments that basically are based on crap and they manipulate the facts, they sell a huge, huge a bunch of these mortgage bonds and it almost, literally almost destroys the world and negatively affects the lives of tens of billions of people. And how many people are homeless on the streets because they lost their home because the mortgage bankers ending up motivated to make a bunch of money. Now, those three examples, who's the person who got in trouble? Was the, the, the CEO of BP. And he didn't get in trouble because he did something horrible or let something horrible happen. He got in trouble because the stock of BP just spiraled down. It's the only reason these people get in trouble. They get promoted if they make money. They get fired if they, if they lose money. And that's it. Morality doesn't even answer the, uh, enter the issue for this whole Christmas spirit is a bunch of BS. There, people are trying to figure out how to, ex to increase sales. And how do they increase sales? Go to a store the day after Halloween 
and they're putting Christmas stuff up on the shelves. This isn't a, this isn't like Jesus is the reason kind of season. This is how do you make how do you make more money? That's it. And it's and it's a bunch of BS. And consumerism is just going to be the death of this country, and and that's just a shame. All right. Next. All right. On my side. Mr. David Travis. Thank you, Terry. Uh, last week I uh, gave a rebuttal and I uh, I think I created a little bit of a stir. Uh, I, uh, uh, they, people here seem to think that I said that Bob Lichtenberg looked like a janitor. The fact is I never said that. Uh -huh. Uh, I, I never said that at all, um, but what I did say was that when I first laid eyes on Bob Lichtenberg, I thought that he looked like a janitor. And uh, when I first laid eyes on Bob Lichtenberg was way back at the uh, Lincoln restaurant. Is there a purpose to this, David? Will you shut up? No, I will not. You see, no, maybe you ought to this sit is up. the big indictment maybe of here. You ought to sit down, this is the big indictment no, no. of communism. Maybe you ought to get they, your head examined. They by use a their power to try to get people uh, uh, hanged, like in the crucible, uh, so they can get their property, so they can uh, just simply destroy people they hate. Uh, this is uh, the big indictment of communism and, and socialism. No, they, the guy who's a Rhodes Scholar, a, a janitor? They do not... Uh, uh, a Rhodes Scholar. Charlie Litton. You see, I can't give a talk no. here be, because that I have to be heckled. And this goes on and on and on. Don't come. Why don't you shut up? Why don't you don't come? Why don't you just shut up? One fool at a time, Charlie. In any event, my biggest indictment of communism and socialism is that those who are like that, they look for ways to cause people trouble. Now, by the way, when I did say what I said, Charlie piped up real quick and, and started warning me that I could be kicked out for name calling. Yeah. Uh, I never called anyone a name, and that's what I want to make clear. However, uh, I'll be the judge of that. However, when no, um, no, Mr. L hello, hello, when Mr. Lichtenberg was angry because he too thought I called him a janitor, thought he he said that I was uh, an idiot. Uh, I noticed you're that Charlie. One minute away from out of here. Uh, uh, once again, Charlie, shut your no. mouth. No, you're no. about one minute away from out of here. In, in out. Any, go ahead. In any event, there was no mention made of that when Bob Lichtenberg called me an idiot. So you see, if you're in tight with the party, you can call someone a name. But if you're not in tight with no, the party, you're not. then you can't call that's somebody unfair. a name. And, yeah. and that's the way that works. I think he's right, Charlie. Like it's very much like the play no, of the Crucible, a time. Tim, which was, a, which was uh, to this kind of stuff. Uh, you, you see, and the fact that funny, he ridicules me proves what I'm saying 100%. <clears throat> You agree with me? You shake his hand? David, you yeah. shake his hand on that? Insulting Lichtenberg like he did? He apologized. Well, he did not. Yeah. Slim Brundage was a, was a janitor. And he founded this, this and place. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's unusual. You thank him. Okay, let's let our next speaker get on, please. Uh, both okay. uh, Tim and Charlie have spoken some truths. Uh, there are solutions out there. But I'm just beginning to realize where the answer is. And I cannot say this more emphatically. The game is bridge, not poker. 
<laughs> the game is bridge, not poker. Everybody's operating on their own. Poker, you're playing on your own. In bridge, you've got a partner. Now, your hand may not look too good by itself, but it's not what's in your hand alone, but it's what's in your hand combined with what's in your partner's hand mm -hmm. and his skill and your skill in playing that hand. Now, in life, I've got a partner, and he's far more skilled than I am. That's God. Good. And I'm going to tell you something else. P L O. Pray, listen, and obey. And the emphasis is on listening to what the Lord says to you. If you seek the Lord sincerely, you will get answers. And that's where the solution lies. Now, you can take one person, spend a full year mentoring and discipling that person. At the end of the year, the two of you can go out and get two more and spend another year discipling those people. At the end of the second year, the four go out and get four more. In 33 years, you could reach 10 billion people. They're trying to change people all at once. Find one person. Listen to man, yes, but also listen to him. That's where your answers lie. Now this world can go one of two directions. Either it can prosper or it can go down the tubes. Uh, two, three hundred years ago, Malthus was saying uh, there weren't enough product to go around. The world maybe had 200 million people at that time. But it seems to be now we've got close to about 7 billion people, and there all seem to be surpluses. Technology helps, yes. But you people have to seek the Lord, open yourselves up, and do what he tells you to do. And if you do that, all of your problems are going to be solved. But you've got to start doing it, you've got to start doing it now. I cannot emphasize this too strongly to you, and you'll probably hear this message again from me from time to time. Okay. First of all, I shook hands with my good friend Dave Travis simply to defend his right to speak. Oh, bullshit. I'm going to get to you in a minute, Charles. No, you get to me right now. And defend his, his speech, one of our and to defend his right to explain himself, which is what he was doing. No, it is. And with regard to you, Charlie, sorry, Charlie, only the best tasting two I get to be star kids. Join him then. The long you line. talk too much. Sit down and shut your goddamn no. mouth. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Oh, the insult. Now, with regard to what Charlie said about, about Christmas, I would say simply this. Charlie reminds me of Ebenezer Scrooge when he said, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should have been boiled in his own pudding and buried with a steak of holly through the heart. Christmas, and by extension Hanukkah, which he also insulted, um, the, those holidays are designed, among other purposes, so that A, people can get a break from their, from their everyday pursuits, and, 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 and two, so that we can try and inculcate in our fellow people the same spirits of goodwill and peace towards people that we would try to inculcate during the holidays, plain and simple. And we don't need some joker standing up here screaming at the top of his mouth at the speaker, regardless of whether he's right or not. Yeah, I will. I, you're darn right I will. 
Well, we'll if there's turn. no life and I ain't nothing, it's against and the rules. We'll, and and we'll turn right and tell you. Rules go for you and too, we'll turn right tell you that yeah, you're wrong. That goes for you too. And that goes for you too. You start insulting speakers like that. We don't you, do that. You, uh, you seem to. And you talk about Christmas. You and seem to want to carry on the battle, Charlie. All you do is show your own ignorance yeah. every time you open your mouth. Yeah. Now, I didn't sure. want to carry it that far. Oh. But you insisted on you insisted on pushing. Go shake his hand. Your pal. Thank you. All right. I, yes, he is a friend. Yeah, of mine. yeah, yeah. Your buddy. All right. Next, please. We're gonna insult you then every week. All right. All right. Uh, bring it on, Charlie. Okay. All right, Charlie's going to give a rebuttal. Yeah, Charlie, you need to give a rebuttal in just a minute. Yeah. Again, uh, I've been listening to this on CDs in my car for the last three weeks, this book. Uh, it's called uh, This Changes Everything. Is that, you have your hand up for the question? Uh, yes, uh, Andy, last week uh, you said something about you were going to bring a paper this week to prove that cigarette smoking is real bad for you and all oh, that. Oh, I thought you mentioned it. I, I simply did a Google search of secondhand smoke and came up with a 10-page. It's in my briefcase, but I didn't think it was appropriate to say anything tonight. Um, you can, uh, the CDC has a 10-page summary on the website. Everybody's familiar with this, the this Center for Disease Control from Atlanta. Right. And it says uh, roughly 38,000 people, non-smokers, die per year from heart uh, disease caused by secondhand smoke. 70,000 70, children have asthma attacks and a lot of them die. And these are all non-smokers. So there, there is a massive amount of data showing the death toll uh, from people inhaling secondhand. And there's also thirdhand smoke where you inhale it from somebody that's close by you that has been smoking. Now, uh, the reason I went home and Googled that was uh, Charlie was saying, uh, like, from studies 25 years ago, back when he was uh, doing the, you know, the negotiating, uh, the database on the harm of secondhand smoke and uh, illnesses and everything, the database has grown massively in the last 25 years. And, uh, and when Charlie was involved back in the 90s, that was the peak of the merchants of doubt where they were paying scientists to claim that there was no, no problems with secondhand smoke. They, they were suppressing the knowledge to, to keep the juggernaut going with the cigarette industry. Yes. Why is secondhand smoke not listed in any labor legal list of prohibited workplace substances, dangerous substances? I haven't in researched the United that. States. I have not researched that. All in I any know. state, oh, Charlie, Charlie, let me finish. I didn't finish my statement. It is not legally prohibited or dangerous. Okay. In any law, rule, or regulation. Last week you were telling me that there was no published data showing secondhand smoke was harmful. That's why they have no law, rule, or regulation. There's massive published data. I'll, no, I'll no. Come to, I'll come next week and uh, I'll make some Xerox copies of that thing and give it to you. So I don't want to talk about that anymore. But my time is going to run out. You have no law then. What I want to talk about is uh, I'm not going to debate something that's non debatable. Okay. Uh, we'll get to move on, Andy, please. Uh, Let's hear this. Naomi Klein talks about uh, solving the climate pro uh, problem as being our best chance to change our system of capitalism into something that's not destroying the planet. The two of them are closely related. That capitalism is giving us, capitalism gave us the war in Iraq and the U.S. Army and the military being the largest destructive machine for pollution on the planet. Uh, capitalism has given us the oil companies and the, the auto industry. It's just more profitable to keep people locked into piggy vehicles. High mileage, I, I don't know if any of you know this, but it's not legal to sell high mileage vehicles in America. They're made, they're made, some are made and exported to other countries to get 60, 70 miles of the gallon, but you can't buy those cars here. And they have 60, 70, 80 mile per gallon vehicles on roads in other countries all over the world but we're being kept in low, low mileage so that the oil companies can make a certain percentage of our paycheck every week for profits. It's just all about profits. And if you take the profit out of war and bring the troops home, the Middle East wars are all about oil profits and two things, making profits for the oil companies and making profits for the military contractors 
that sell all that garbage to the military, they're breakable stuff. Uh, you know, when you sell refrigerators, they last 20 years, more or less. But if you sell bombs, missiles, and everything else, that stuff gets broken and used up, and they have an endless supply of orders going to the military. Smedley Butler wrote that book, War is a Racket. War is profitable, and it is driven by the desire for capitalists to make profits on scheduling these little wars every now and then when they just make billions. So she's talking about that in this book, but mainly the idea that clean, green jobs where people make a living and they're not over in Iraq and Afghanistan killing people, it would revolutionize both the, the, you know, the environmental problems and the economic problems. So there's, there's, plenty, there's plenty of wealth and food and everything else to go around if we do something about the billionaire predators that are hoarding it right now. So uh, that's it. That's, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Okay. All right, your turn. Go ahead. I never thought that uh, the best religious program, uh, sermon, religious sermon that I have ever gotten was not in a church, it was right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, that was a real good one. Uh, I think uh, Thanksgiving has been mentioned. Those those two holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, are supposed to bring us together. It, it's a good thing. Society needs it. We should focus more on our friends and our acquaintances. Uh, and those are the two days that really do it. I, I think that Thanksgiving should be called the Great Turkey Massacre. The food bird has to pay for our <laughs> enjoyment. Come on now. Be with it. Next thing I can hear Charlie say, defend the Turkey. But the thing is this. It really, uh, you know, it came about when uh, supposedly the Puritans were starving. Because back in history, maybe you have heard of it. And uh, they were in a bad shape when they got here, and they were actually saved by the indigenous people who brought them turkey and corn and other staples, and uh, they saved them from starvation. So that's the reason we are celebrating that day. But then when the white man got stronger, what did he do to the indigenous people? Not a good thing to remember, right? Just forget about that. Otherwise, the celebration will be a little bit hypocritical, don't you think? Um, and Christmas, well, gosh, Christmas. Christmas and capitalism, I like that. Uh, I got a feeling that uh, since we went from production, the making of the trinkets that we pushed during Christmas. The production went to, really, to China. You buy anything and it says made in China, regardless of the quality. And, but the price is cheap. So, what, when we celebrate Christmas, in a sense, we are making a lot of Chinese richer. It's not us that are making richer. We benefit because we got cheaper products, cheaper trinkets, and we get addicted to trinkets, exchange trinkets. Okay. What's the law? All right, Charlie, you get a chance to rebut in a minute. So, materialism versus Christmas. Um, 
one thing that always keep in mind, when you exchange trinkets, those trinkets have to be made. And if they are made here, we also contribute to waste. In every, if every time our population increases, more trinkets have to be produced, more trinkets are exchanged, especially during Christmas, and more waste is being produced. And so we can escape that. And the more of us increase in number, the more trinkets have to be produced, the more CO2, and the more methane. Don't forget methane now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good boy. All right. Final rebuttals. Let's go, Charlie. You're up, Charlie. You're up, I'll take it. I'm up. You're up. Your final rebuttals. And in answer to Charlie's question, he kept asking me, where's the law? The law is you don't have to ban secondhand smoke when you ban smoking in the restaurant. No, come on. Let's go. My that's job. the law. Right. No. I, I've been dealing with the thing about secondhand smoke very quickly. It was, it, it was implemented, smoking regulation, a little stronger over the years. Over a period of time, implementation, smoking cessation, and the rules. Now, if something is hazardous to the health, there's law, rule, or regulation, government-wide, across the United States, that it's a hazardous substance and it's not permitted in the workplace. Period. It doesn't take period of years like asbestos. And there's pismone, there's standards, you can measure it to permissible exposure levels, never been issued on secondhand smoke. They came up with secondhand roundabout legislation like, well, if, if it's a place where people work, the, there shouldn't be smoking. In some places, that's what I mean. It, they're, not, they're not occupational hazard. Do you know what an occupational hazard is? Sure. Where it qualifies it's making the, the handbooks that are issued by the federal, state, and local governments. The monitor that I use mm -hmm. on trades and crafts. There's nothing in there about secondhand smoke. What about the airlines? No, no, mm -hmm. no. They were inhaling. You can't, you have the, the I, that's all I'm going to say. Okay. It's not listed, it's not in my books. As well, so what? Hazard. So what? Are we done with this? You're right. I'm tired of arguing about it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's not here. Here's your stuff back. It's not, there's no law citation in there. Uh, anyhow, let's see what else. The thing about Christmas, the other thing, you know, I, I came across something um, about oh, one other thing. We invite speakers to come here. I'm glad that they do. Many people spend a lot of time and effort preparing their speeches. Some people are very good and some aren't. But if they're not very good, there's three things you can do. You can be quiet and say nothing. Um, you could get up and say neutral or thank you. But the one thing you're not going to do is insult the people. I appreciate what they do and the time and effort of each and every one of our speakers. And they're not going to be mistreated. I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. That's discourteous, that's low. That's low. We're talking about this holiday here, and we're not going to do that to people. Uh, to, to, come, to come here and beat up on people and do that. No, that's not the purpose of it. You can have fun with people, uh, but to thank them for what they did. If you don't like the speaker or something like that, you can always get up and leave. Nothing obligates you to stay here. You know, so, and there's nothing, nothing can cheat by it. I appreciate what they do. Now, some speakers aren't, aren't better than others, you know, admittedly. But we sat through it. I think we lived. It was no great expense to us, and I didn't need, I thank everyone who speaks at the college complexes when I go home tonight, and every, every Saturday, and I thank them for the effort that they put in. Some of them don't deserve it. They don't put in any effort in preparation, but others do. Last of all about Christmas, I just want to tell you about a video, so I don't know how I came across it, but there was one kid in pajamas, and they had a tree in the background, and he was opening gifts. And they were all pretty good and crisp. But I'm amazed by this video. I wasn't like, I thought it would go like for a couple minutes. It went on for over an hour. This kid was opening gifts by one after another. And that's... <laughs> 
I'm serious. I said, this is unbelievable. He was actually getting tired, fatigued by opening gifts. Now, I think a little candy cane is, you know, a little treats at Christmas, whatever. You know, let, I mean, but there are boundaries to, to this kind of stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, within reason, I guess we can have a good time. I, a lot of the things, you know, better be good in Santa and all that, you know, the stories have come up. But, uh, yeah, it, it is a serious issue, though. We do have ecological things. There are some things, though, seriously, like the toys that are made out of plastic cannot be recycled because they're made of different kinds of plastic and they go right in the landfills. Oh. There's no recycling them. All right, thanks a lot. I think myself, in regards to Christmas, it's your own choice to celebrate how you do it. It's your own choice whether you want to celebrate or not. But I think what I'm going to simply do to close out our, our show